my doctor, my lawyer, my nutritionist, my coach, and most importantly, my friend. Azero. Hey guys, so this video is in response to Greg Doucette's top 10 exercises to avoid. Specifically, his number two listed exercise, the ass to grass squat. And just as a disclaimer, I am a fan of Greg Doucette. I am a fan of seemingly honest guys on the internet like, say, Derek from More Plates, More Dates. His outlook on health and wellness and no bullshit approach to nutrition and lifting is something to be commended, and he has really set the bar for other YouTubers, myself included. Greg, if you're out there, I disagree with you on this particular point, but I will not take away from the positive impact you've had on your followers. And though this may seem like a call out, it is simply an opposing opinion that I hope you will respect. As to grass squats, you don't need to squat this deep to build muscle. Deeper doesn't mean better. Where I don't want to get into is a debate on semantics. Greg is correct in saying that you don't need to squat this deep to grow muscle. That is correct with most things. You don't need to do anything in training that you aren't comfortable with. Squatting to parallel may be comfortable for you. That's fine. You absolutely can grow muscle with that movement. Also, if you continue to do things with intensity, but in a controlled method, a la the movements you are comfortable with, you will have a higher likelihood of staying injury free. However, just because you aren't comfortable squatting deep, it doesn't mean that with the proper regressions and progressions, you can't be comfortable squatting deep. I would challenge anyone who is currently in that parallel or slightly higher comfort zone to look at the bigger picture of the full depth squat as it pertains to a basic human function. For this, I'm gonna use myself and many of the athletes I have coached and worked with as anecdotal accounts of this progression. Though it may seem like I have a bias to deep squatting as a skill that I developed for weightlifting, I assure you that this process would have been beneficial for myself and has been beneficial to the non-weightlifting athletes I've worked with. First and foremost, when we consider the barbell back squat, people naturally assume this is a heavy lift or it has to be a heavy lift. This is where you should be lifting the most weight outside of maybe a deadlift and other partial movements, you think. After all, this is one of the most popular movements where we are constantly inundated with huge squats on Instagram and YouTube. And with this in mind, it is much simpler to try and squat comfortably, which would be to parallel or maybe higher, because the load is such that lower movement would cause discomfort. And so that's really the idea that I would like to challenge, that the load must be heavy when you're squatting or developing the legs with a squat. I believe that first, the mobility and stability required to sit in a freestanding low squat should be explored in everyone who wants to train their legs. Many of these end ranges of motion to the layman are places they have never been. So obviously, loading them with a barbell is foolish. However, when starting, there is no better load than one's own body weight. By sitting in this end range of motion, you can work through progressions that I have formulated to then be able to load a full depth squat. People should be encouraged to work on their mobility in the hips, knees, and ankles with just their body weight. Then maybe move on to a kettlebell or a dumbbell, either goblet style or in the front rack, and then a barbell. These are foreign ranges of motion, but they shouldn't be avoided simply because we need external load especially when the mobility gains can be used for more optimal leg gains. In a study by Kubo et al., there were two groups of males. One group assigned full depth squats and the other half squats. The MRIs of both groups after the 10 week, twice a week squat protocol showed increases in knee extensor muscles, adductor and gluteus maximus from the full squat group were significantly higher than that of the half squat group. And what's interesting about this experiment was the use of MRI to measure muscle growth rather than the EMG amplitudes for muscle activation. In many of the EMG readouts from other experiments, there was a very little difference or some higher readings of activation for that of the parallel or half squat. Unless you're born with the hip sockets to handle it, it's gonna be dangerous for you. Something that I commonly have a gripe with is people labeling exercises 
or even certain sports and training methodologies as dangerous. I made a video about strongman Robert Oberst's claims on Joe Rogan that regular average people shouldn't train deadlifts because they're dangerous. In this video, I talked with Sam Spinelli, a well-known doctor in physical therapy, about where this conclusion is wrong. Is the straight bar deadlift or straight bar deadlift type movements more dangerous than other movements that might be utilized? No. It's all about the usage and implementation and rationale behind what you're doing. If we take any movement and do it poorly or with insufficient preparation for the movement, it's always going to be a risk. That's not unique to that movement. So what Sam said in the deadlift can be exactly replicated towards the full depth squat. As far as hip sockets and physiology go, I think this is a tough claim to back up. I find it hard to believe that someone is really capable of making this call, that they are simply not built to move that way. When they make this claim, have they developed the deep squat from body weight to very slowly implementing more load over time? Were they pain-free throughout this progression? If the answer is yes to these, then I'd find it really hard to believe that they aren't built for the deep squat. And if the answer is no, well then they should probably do both of those things fully before saying that they aren't built for it or that the movement is dangerous for them. At the end of the day, I understand Greg is making a video with his opinion. I also understand that though his words seem absolute at times, these statements keep the videos moving. He doesn't like the deep squat, he has had success not doing it and not allowing his lifters to do it, so there's really nothing wrong with it. The only thing I'm offering is a defense against the critique that this movement has received and the chance of it being labeled as a suboptimal or a dangerous movement.